Shall we on with the shenanigans? I believe so. We shall. All right. Genanigans and henanigans, we're all into it. <laughs> and <they> anigans, <laughs> yes. Yes. Welcome to another episode of Nerdy West Coast Swing, where the anchors are out of this world and the points don't matter. Normally, we are here to help you train your eyes so you can learn faster and dance better. But today, we have a very, very special episode, our tall follow panel. We have so many tall, glorious trees amongst us. <laughs> so excited. I'm Cassie Winter. And I'm Alicia Marshall. If you're wondering who we are to be I guess hosting this panel today. <laughs> to be chilling uh, Cassie, with these cool people. <laughs> Cassie and I both have um, extensive experience in both partnered and solo dancing. She has about 21 years, I have about 23. So that being said, we have some wonderful people with us here today. Um, I'm just gonna go in order of my screen. <laughs> we have Michelle Crozier. <laughs> we have Tim Kenny. Hello. Yeah, Phoenix Gray. We have Bryn Anderson. Hi. And we have Tessa Antolini. Happy Halloween! <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I think we're all ready to get started, yeah? Let's do it. Okay, perfect. Let's, or... let's go around and say how tall we are and maybe That's how many bananas I mean. tall we are, because yes. <laughs> Phoenix shared that wonderful graph. Uh, I'm 5'11", and therefore 10 bananas. <laughs> Michelle, I am five eight and three quarters, and thusly nine point six seven five bananas tall. Yeah, this is extremely Plus. precise. Yep, Tim. Mm -hmm. I'm also five eleven, uh, thus as well ten bananas. Yep. Phoenix. I am six foot tall, which is uh, one point eight two meters for the civilized world, and. Uh -huh. What was it? 10.1 bananas for the uncivilized. Perfect. We're good. For friends. my friends. Um, I, I honestly don't know whether I'm 5'9 or 5'10. I feel like I'm probably 5'9-ish. What did I say? 5'10? Okay. In that case, I am 9.9 .9 bananas. Um, as the average banana goes. <laughs> and Tessa. I am also 5'10", which makes me 9.9 .9 bananas, and um, that pretty much covers all of my grades in school. Never quite at the very top. <laughs> Perfect. All righty. Well, um, for those of you that don't know me in person, I'm 5'4", so I'm just here to be the host. Um, <laughs> I have no opinion here today. <laughs> you're, you're, you're an honorary tall follow today. Mm -hmm. Apparently. All righty. <laughs> So let's get started with our first question. Um, it's gonna be, what pattern is your pet peeve as a tall follow? Who, who wants to take that first? Phoenix. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Am I going first? Yeah, your, 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 your double chins were very- Yeah, my, my chins were telling. You have a feeling about this one, so. Yeah, and, and you know what? It's really common too. A basic underarm pass. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. One I, <laughs> I have I have I have hour and a half workshops on those things. Mm -hmm. I helped you teach one once. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when we could leave Portland? <sighs> oh, it was lovely. Oh man. The before times. All right. Anyone else have a different pet peeve pattern, or are we all like yeah. underarm? Turn? I can go next. Yeah, go <laughs> for it. Any dip that isn't a sit dip, like my center has so much <gasps> further to go off of my yes! and Bro. then you don't realize that there's chopping down a sycamore tree. Like it's not gonna land at their feet. They need to like run with it and then come back. <laughs> so a lot of times my center of gravity is so far off to one side or the other that I'm either on the floor or they're giving me the I'm sorry look. 
Um, and then they get a little bit offended if you sit yourself out of it. So that's uh, yeah. one word. Unless I trust my leader to know what's up, I'm not going to go for it. And we actually story. did an episode, uh, Bryn, of your dance with Robert Royston at yeah. Spectacular, because uh, he did your um, oh, yeah. your dip so perfectly. Like I drew it, it was like geometry. It was great. And that's uh, cool. Away. <laughs> it was, it was mwah. Uh, if I remember, I'll put like a link to that uh, episode. I want to see that again. <laughs> oh, it's good dance. Yes. It was very comfy. Because I, I do think that when I completely agree with Michelle about you needing to run to make sure that you actually catch us if you do dip us uh, for a leader. Um, but it is much easier if you pull straight down or straight to the side I feel like so Robert did one of those things I don't really remember he leapt through the air to cover the distance for you it's quite beautiful in slow motion (laughs) (laughs) and I feel like we should give Robert extra credit because he isn't the the loftiest of leaders no the fact that he managed to do that um and still cover the distance kudos Mm -hmm. yes well his personality is like 10 feet tall so it's true true. it's very true taller than all of us Mm -hmm. (laughs) um i have a different one okay um and mine would be ducks i I was gonna say yeah um i find that i that most leaders are taught them and learn them with sort of the average five foot four five foot five follow and never um, are either given the information about how to adjust how to adjust that for a taller follow, or just are too interested in getting the cool pattern across to be able to adapt in the moment to whatever goes on. Um, and I, uh, especially if it's on like the last day of a, an event, my legs are so tired from having to get down and get back up again. Um, it, that I deeply prefer to be able to keep my head above sea level. And uh, and again, I feel like this has come up a couple of times. Trust is a huge, wonderful factor. So if I know you, if I'm familiar with your abilities, then by all means, go ahead. If you're not familiar with me, I'd prefer you sort of have what I call ramping patterns so that you have a relatively easy, I bear my own body weight kind of duck before you ask me to do multiple spins in a, in, you know, penguin pose. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, do you also find, cause one of the things that I also struggle with with any sort of like duck is they aim purely for height if they are trying to compensate, but they then take out all of the width. So you suddenly have to be a two dimensional human being instead of having an actual center with a body that goes around it. Is that something that everyone else struggles with too? I have an opposite duck problem. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, somebody can try to duck me from my mid back and I'll still go under it. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have problems. <laughs> when I'm moving with, with momentum, like somebody will try to hammer lock me, but they hammer lock too high. So I just duck under it. Oh. Yeah. Like kind of semi Tatiana mode. Yeah, that's a mm-hmm. cool skill. Yeah. Now come to think of it or steal mm-hmm. it. Yes. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I go under everything. I, I, I feel like the elbow is the greatest benefit to me. If mm-hmm. you can Absolutely. Get higher, then that helps me not have to squat so much. Mm-hmm. But also for our tall, tall followers who are watching, not just the leaders, um, get out there and start figuring out how to. Oh. Oh no, Uh-oh. her legs are bent. Cliffhanger. Yeah, you froze right when you were about to say what the magic was. (laughs) That was intentional. Oh, I was going to say, get get out there and start to engage your butt. Because if your rear end is helping to support you in a squatted position, then getting down for a duck is much, much easier. Hmm. Yep. Everybody's like, right, the butt. The butt. (laughs) Yes, the butt. I also danced through my butt. Any other answers? <laughs> I've got one. If anybody else doesn't, um, sugar pushes. Where you know? I call them, Ooh, I call yeah. them the drinking bird sugar push. Where you're just led down. <laughs> 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 I 
I, I do actually have one more tiny one. Um, it's like low grade peeve level, but it's constant. And that's when a leader um, leads expecting my center to be the average followers level as opposed to mine. So I often wind up feeling like I'm getting pulled down at the same time as all of my other leads. Um, and of course, like you don't, like as a leader, you don't want to like raise your arms above your shoulders because that would be kind of awkward. <laughs> but um, if you create more of a table shape, then that helps a lot. Yes, I highly agree. Actually, last week in um, leading up to today, uh, we highlighted two of your videos, Tessa. And one of the things that I highlighted is how like how common it is for leaders to just swing their ones from their arms, from their shoulders. So that creates a downward angle. And if the follow is taller than them, that really feels down. And the and the trick is just to make sure that the hand stays level through count one and it just, just lets match. It's like a pull out keyboard, people. Mm-hmm. I dream of being led forward. Or cash register. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but I, I feel like I just get really good at sweepy kind of ones. <laughs> That's what you asked for, right? Hashtag mm -hmm. adapt. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. Any other answers, things to say, things to add? No? Okay. Next question. It's um it's a silly question, is how often do you actually get hit in the head? <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't yeah, even Phoenix know. Phoenix hits himself in the head. I, I think the hard part about that one for me is that the object that hits me in the head most often is my own hand. Yeah. Um, so their yep. awareness of the fact that they've hit me in the head is diminished, which is a shame. I feel like I need one of those staples easy buttons, but like on the other side, <laughs> every time they get it, you know, it's like, ow, or you got me. <laughs> so true. Yeah. 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 I feel like I'm very protective of my space around mm -hmm. me. And so like, I probably actually don't uh, adapt to my leader's lead quite as effectively, but it results in me hitting myself very infrequently. Um, so. Yeah. I'm kind of in a, in a sorry. No, I'm in a, oh, well, I'm in kind of like a similar space. Like I've, I've like trained myself to be like, I have space. This is my space. You better respect it. Damn it. Um, but like, that's, that's a, a fine line. You have to tiptoe as a follower of like keeping that space for yourself and then the leader's not adapting to it or, or listening to that space. Yeah. So then you start, it's kind of like fighting. Um, so like one of the big things that, that I've had that's like kind of changed everything for me is like, just follow my hand more. So, so that being when the, the radius of rotation over my head is this instead of this, then I turn like that <laughs> instead of turn like that, like I wanted to. So right over the head, I just flip around. I started doing like the French crosses and things. Mm -hmm. Life changer. <laughs> Any other responses? I kind of want to feed off Phoenix, but I could be jumping into something that you're going to speak about later on down the line. Which okay, about it. Uh, I feel like uh, what he's just said is another description of my aha moment. That I take. Oh, we lost her. Is is deeply influential on my experience of happiness while dancing. And that if I take went back when I was a younger dancer, if I took the length of stride that was most comfortable for me, I would often be cut short. And that when I learned how to feel comfortable taking a smaller step, um, that helped me tremendously. And then and then idols like Phoenix who are able to spin themselves with greater velocity so that when the space is running out, you can turn to help fix the space problem rather than, than have to deal with that clonk on the head. That was sort of like the, those two things. So that was being able to decipher through the connection, how big a step to take 
I, if the if it got looser, that was a sign that I had taken too long a stride. If it was tight, a sign that I had taken too short a stride, or on the other side of the coin, had moved too slowly if it was really tight, or too quickly if it was really loose. And those things make the world difference to any follower's life, but I feel like taller followers have to learn them faster because the repercussions to our frames and our shoulders are greater. Raise your hand if you've got a shoulder injury. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually don't. I don't have a shoulder injury. <laughs> they do this. You like, have a how can I get a shoulder, shoulder. injury when they do that? I'm actually with Phoenix. Like, the reason I think that I've never actually gotten my shoulders hurt before is because growing up, I was so flexible that, like, people would do strange things with me, but it wouldn't matter because my shoulder was just like, <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Any other responses? No, we're good. Okay. So next question is, what is one thing that you wish all leaders understood about leading tall followers? Everyone's like, I have to pick one. I'm watching the panelists' reactions to various things. I know, right? <laughs> Go, Phoenix. Okay. Um, slots have three dimensions. Yes. Mm, I like that. Yeah. Like you when you when when you're dealing with a tall follower, everybody's thinking about how high they have to get. And it's more than just like going high enough. You have to go the width of our shoulders because we end up flipping 180 by the time we get there. <laughs> and and as you progress down the line, the hand progresses. Oh, I'm trying to make this on the line. The hand progresses. So like it's kind of this little swoopy doo or like a little corkscrew of sorts that goes through and progresses. Um, I've heard Michelle talk about like a fairy dust trail or something. I love that. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, there's three dimensions to the path of the hand and it makes a difference. Yeah, that's if me. anything, I feel overcompensated to more often than I feel neglected. Mm. I think because you're from the West Coast. <laughs> Maybe I'm just spoiled. <laughs> um, but yeah, even at conventions, although to be fair, most of the conventions I go to also West Coast. West Coast. Um, but yeah, I feel like leaders see my height and so often I get like comments of like, oh, I'm going to have to stand with good posture or, oh, I'm really going to have to be careful. Um, and I wish they That's knew scary. that they didn't have to work so hard like I'm there to participate in creating the dance with them uh, and a lot of times they actually go go to the opposite end similar to what Phoenix was saying where like the hand is going so high um, or they're jumping to give me a turn I'm like I'll work with you like let's figure out what our like synergy is yeah so maybe you don't have to verbally comment on your partner's height before the dance starts <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like yeah. that one. <laughs> Unless it's like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. If it's like, oh, this is going to be nice. <laughs> It'd be great. Because I've done that one. I have like the six I'm gonna have to four. Work hard. <laughs> Who yeah. here has. When I have the six foot four leaders, I'm like, oh boy. Yeah. Who here has danced a barrel roll finally with someone tall enough that it felt comfortable and you both come out the other end going, ah. <sighs> <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> Bryn. Yeah. Bryn just making us all jealous. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, yes! Six five. Uh, so good. Anyway. Uh, poor Phoenix and I live in a very short community. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's why we. It's, it's our world. It's our world. We get used to it. Why? Why so short? I don't know. Portland is like this weird short mecca on the West Coast for West Coast swing. <laughs> but it's mainly because Portland is internationally known for its Argentine tango scene. So if we were to cross over to Argentine ah. tango, that's where all the tall men are in Portland. Oh, yes, that's like really? the towering monoliths of men are in Argentine tango in Portland. And that was a nice alliteration you got there. Monoliths. Monoliths. Manoliths. 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 
Manolith. Oh, Manolith. I need that on my wall. <laughs> bucket, bucket. Well, that's a manolith. That's my bucket list item. I don't, I don't know if New England has anybody over like six foot one or six foot two. Oh, man. Oh, you're like us. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I went to Norway. Oh my God. They were all so tall. It was yeah. heaven. You know, I'm part Norwegian, right? That's like where it comes from. That explains oh, that. I'm Dutch. Yeah. And yeah. The, pa the paleness. <laughs> like a son. Uh, so are there any other like if you wish leaders could understand one thing about leading a tall follow what would it be um if i were to combine some of what phoenix said about a slot having three dimensions and tim's comment on um like tall followers especially like wanting their own space I would think if you try to think of us as just having a slightly bigger bubble, like a personal space than small followers and think about like managing the bubble from the outside. So like if you have a beach ball and it's a huge beach ball and you wanna spin the beach ball, you're not gonna like shove your hands into the middle of the beach ball because that's impossible and spin a non-existent center. You're gonna go all the way to the outside and you're gonna rotate it all the way out here. So this is where I want my hands to be when you lead me, not over here. So I think what we keep saying over and over is that we appreciate width and girth. We, we do. Yes. Oh, we do. <laughs> and I was gonna add also length, but then it's <laughs> now in a context <laughs> not as great. Uh <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> This is why we have you here. This is wonderful. Because otherwise, then it's just me offering all of this. Because, <laughs> yeah, like it applies to the length of arm. And so if we're going to go to a place where my hand is at the same like angle with respect to myself, I have to cover more distance if the hand stays in place mm -hmm. than someone with a shorter lever arm. And so it actually makes sense to give your tall follower a longer stride because they have to cover more distance of frame as their hand comes up in like an underarm turn, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, so the length is also relevant. Yeah. Um, that being matter. said. The size doesn't matter, particularly. Yeah. But then not to add power to that length, because mm -hmm. like, we got that covered. Yes. <laughs> That's the thing that I was going to add into this, is, is that the energy that it takes to both ask me to go and to ask me to stop is not particularly more than somebody who's smaller. Um, in fact, I would just go ahead for everybody's here today and blanketly say you don't need more energy um, to be able to ask us to go or stop. Um, and often I feel like because we all have a longer lever in lots of different ways where we learn better skills for stopping ourselves and changing our own direction out of our own mechanics. Um, so to reduce the amount of like concentric pull in and, and concentric push out is uh, is really helpful. But every time I come up with one of these things, I'm like, but I'd love for you to do that for your shorter followers too. <laughs> yep, yep. Use enough energy to get what you want, which means knowing what you wanted from us. I would say- Mm -hmm. are like cars it, it's more dependent on the tuning than the size of the car you're not going to hit the accelerator a lot harder for a truck unless it's the truck itself that's kind of the the thing that requires you to really press the gas on it a great yeah. analogy Phoenix. Yeah, I, I love that. that i'm all analogies <laughs> i think um let's actually for me and Cassie, we're going to skip down and okay. go with kind of what you guys were just talking about and say, you guys get a lot more momentum from leads who don't expect you to be able to move quickly. I, I, I would say that that is a skill set based thing as opposed to a size thing. So the better a leader becomes, the less likely they are to prejudge that based on what the image is that they see. And yeah, that's my experience anyway. So yeah. interesting. 
I mean, I think one of one of mine, um, just as a as a male follower, like there's expectations sometimes. And I remember I, I can't keep track of it so much now, but I remember that the result was actually different to what you would assume. Like you would think that when you're dancing with a guy, you could be rougher with them. But really, most leaders are gentler with me than I figured they would be with with uh, typical followers. Like they're still stable in there, but like I feel like the expectation of them being rougher or adding more energy um, isn't necessarily there unless I ask for it. I will definitely use it if it's there. But yeah. What else? I don't know. I like, I don't know if I've had that experience. So I don't know if it's a universal male follower thing. Like I, I, I know that I have trust, trust issues. Um, <laughs> so like, I actually tend to not empower my leader to move me um, very fast. So I'll keep myself fairly light and not kind of committed um, weight wise um, and then move myself. But that's, I think that's a, that's a personal thing. I don't know if that's a universal experience. <laughs> yeah, that might not be that's a universal to male follows, but I'm, I'm similar to Tim and that I tend to dance with a very light connection and I don't, I, I trust my leader with weight in increments or with leverage in increments. Um, and the leaders who yank on me are usually doing so because they're falling because they've attuned themselves to a heavier connection from their follower so when i have my own weight and i'm redirecting myself i'm not leveraging against them they're not used to that and they fall so it's actually mm -hmm. a, sort of a, a system where the, they have too much weight on their end or they're expecting me to leverage more than i am mm -hmm. would you um prefer to dance more leveraged but you just tend not to because that support or trust isn't there most of the time I think it's more of a what's going to feel best with this partner question because a lot of my partners their center is a little bit lower than mine if I try to like leverage low into my hips it can actually be a little higher than their center and all of a sudden they feel like I'm going to pull them over um, so depending on the height of my leader that kind of determines how much leverage I want to give them in order to create a good like functional connection. All right. Any other responses? No? Okay. Moving on then. So our next question is, <clears throat> how much more difficult would you say it is being a taller follow than one of average height? Has anybody here been of average height in the last 10 years, 15 years? <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> So, um, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't actually remember very well, but I was a junior in West Coast Swing. I'm 21 now. So it really like wasn't that long ago that I was 5'5", 5'6", 5'7". I feel like... That was a very long pause. Um, <laughs> Pros. <laughs> so I I feel like it does not actually have to do as much with your height as much as your how much you have learned and your experience and skill set in the dance. So if you are a tall follower, but you've trained a lot and you've practiced enough to where you have really good mechanics, your dance can feel a lot easier and a lot better than someone who's average height who has not practiced and mastered as much. So really, um, like I feel like dancing is a lot easier for me now just because I am a better dancer than when I was, you know, 14 and an intermediate. Um, and it's not because I'm taller or shorter or I was shorter then, it's because like I have better turns, balance, et cetera, so. Mm -hmm. I find that a lot of my struggles as a taller follower don't happen on the dance floor. They happen in a learning environment, mm -hmm. uh, especially earlier on when I didn't have the discernment to understand what was an instruction versus a correction. And 
oftentimes that led to me receiving feedback that didn't offer me a holistic view of the dance. It offered me a view of the dance where my height was a burden. Hmm. So I could have the same problems as a shorter follower and they'd get like a technical instruction to correct it. And I'd get like a height-based correction. Hmm. Yeah, I've, I've been finding that um, when I tackle tall specific follower issues in classes, uh, like when I address the issue of arm height and, and spacing and all of that, it's, it's a problem that I've noticed for everybody. It's just more exaggerated for the taller followers. So in by addressing the tall follow issue, everybody gets to experience a better life. So like even, you know, the, the five twos and the, the, the shorter followers, um, you know, they'll pop in and be like, this is a world I could have had. Why have you been holding this from me? Yep. Anyone else? Um, well, I just, oh, you go, you go. Yeah, I wanted to just kind of like connect what Phoenix and Tessa said earlier. So like Phoenix is saying, we all need those skills. And Tessa mentioned earlier, taller followers need those technical instructions a little bit sooner because the effects of not having them can be exaggerated in our frame and, and in our connection. Um, but yeah, I just, I have my general pet peeve to go back to even the first question is when tall, tall followers get corrections based on their height rather than a deep understanding of the dance, um, which does need to happen sooner in the journey. Right. Big mood, big mood. Yeah, I 100% <laughs> agree with that. And then on the other side of that coin is that if you do occasionally have like a very specific physics based, I'm taller, they're shorter, how do I handle this situation? So many of the pros, at least that I've had access to through my journey have no empath empathetic experience with what mm -hmm. I'm dealing with. And often I would approach them with a very, very specific problem. Like this is happening because this is happening. How do I manage it on my end? So I'm being a better partner to my partner and they would not be able to give me an answer. Um, so it, it, it goes both ways. Oddly enough, I feel like when I have people who ask me those questions, um, I, I direct them back to some of the videos that we have from the nineties because in the 90s, we didn't have necessarily taller follows, but we had follows that were taller than their leaders. And sometimes even if it was like a five foot six woman and a five foot two dude, they're not tall, but their ratio compared to each other was like that. So it's helpful to me sometimes to point them in that direction because they don't need, it, it's, it, it's, the, it's the relative that's more important than the actual. Um, and so even though today, um, Mackenzie is our only, um, uh, top 10, uh, routine champion. That is an example of somebody who's, I think she's probably 5'11 when I'm standing next to her. Um, it's helpful. Thank you, Kenzie, for getting up there for, so that we can redirect, re um, direct people to your videos. But, um, but she's also dancing with a very tall leader. So it's not necessarily that like, mm -hmm. How tall is Brandy? I feel like she's tall. I feel like she's five six, five seven. No, because she's I'm tiny. Her personality. Yeah, yeah. she moves larger than the guys. Yeah, Both stand next and she carries herself so yeah. tall for yeah. her size. The way I have she holds stood herself. next to her and like looked her in the eye though. Does oh, she just have that much better posture than me when we're walking around normally? <laughs> How that leads me to a different question. How many of you, because you're tall people living in a slightly shorter world, do you just make yourself like maybe a half inch shorter most of the time? That's actually a problem that I have when I'm dancing. <laughs> if you look at any photo of me during a turn from, I would love to say novice, but let's be honest, advanced still, I'm like doing this, <laughs> very much taking height back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. There's yep. a lot of videos of me just like, Warping under turns. Yeah, particularly push tucks. Everybody would compliment me. Uh, Your styling on a push tuck is so gorgeous, and I'm like, I'm saving my life. Mm -hmm. I do not want to be decapitated. Yes, that. I like um, my head. I think mm -hmm. that unfortunately, I've gotten some negative feedback for standing so tall that I don't look street enough, that I look too ballroomatic, which is the world that I come from. And, and I'm always sad that they associate 
maintaining my spine with styling choices. That doesn't mean that I don't have those other qualities and other aspects of my dance. I do, but Mm -hmm. the height one, I want, I, I don't want anybody to hear feedback that they need to slouch in order to be Westy. Mm. That's something that I Agreed. actually absolutely experienced. Yeah, absolutely experienced as well. Cause people would say like, they give me critiques, like you're very vertical. I need to see more like angles from you. Um, and my, like after trying that for a while, I came to the conclusion that I just can't approach angles like the average height follower, because if I decide that I'm going to lean forward, four degrees, three degrees, that makes way <laughs> more of a difference to my overall posture and my overall dynamics than it does for someone who's five, two. That was an um, opening lesson with Brandy when she talked about the fact that I could afford to pitch less because I was a longer lever. And I was like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who here took way too long to find the right pitch for themselves as a follow? Yep. I still can't find it. Yeah. And every once in a while, you just randomly sink into it before you know how to get into it on purpose. And you're like, what is making that happen? What is this magic? Can I keep what? it? Can I follow I, it? I, I want to keep it. Uh, but I, I encountered the same problem with preps for turns because, um, because our frame is longer. Our radius is therefore longer. And therefore, the same degree of prep ends up being more of the circumference of that circle. And it needs to be a larger prep. But we still get sometimes the, the, the tiny prep. And I'm just like, Meh. you cannot and, prep someone from the center. Yeah. And like the lever arm is longer. So the force applied has a greater impact. Yes. Like, yeah. Physics. Um, can, I ask, can I ask a question? Of yeah, of course. Um, I've been watching a lot of Angel videos and Angel Figueroa mm. and, and remembering my dancing with him, which um, admittedly for the first few years was absolutely terrible because I wanted my frame to be out here and he wanted my frame to be in here. And I feel like I had was just starting to capture how to be strong and myself inside this narrow space. But I still feel like I don't have a huge amount of skill of it. And I wonder whether um, like Bryn in particular who dances in Texas where I find that that oh, yeah. is less with the frame. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Royston has, has influenced so many people up where I dance that there tends to be more with. I'm just curious how you handle that. Um, I breathe out really hard when I turn. So I go, <laughs> and then I can turn faster. Um, I think, so I grew up with very narrow frames. It's actually something that I struggle with and I'm still working on to uh, make sure that I'm widening my frame more now. Um, but I think just having a very tight relationship um, between your shoulder, your core, your hips, your quads, and then your calves and feet. Um, basically just making sure that you have a lot of I don't want to say rigidity, but like a healthy amount of tension in your body um, when you are dancing with a close frame and you're turning makes it a lot easier for you to actually accomplish those moves. Um, if you're used to dancing wide and you're used to a lot of mechanical advantage, then you don't have to work as hard with the rest of your body. Um, but if you do have a prep, uh, it's one of these, which you'll probably get if you're a tall follow, where like it's here mm. instead of here. Mm. Um, my Jack and Jillarama shirt. Um, I miss it so much. <laughs> anyway, um, I forgot what I was saying. With the frame? Yes. Frame. Oh yeah, when your frame is here um, and you've been practicing almost spinning by yourself actually, that would be a really good drill. Just like literally taking yourself from a two position and spinning yourself around by yourself, um, that makes it a lot easier for you to deal with a, a, a slot that's very narrow. Tim, my physics man, do you have anything to add to that? <laughs> um, you know, I haven't really thought very much about that, surprisingly. Um, I very much dance with my frame super wide. And it's, I'm, I'm trying to bring it back in a little bit. 
oh there is something yeah yeah um <laughs> if you hang off of a like a door frame for instance um with your arm next to your shoulder it's going to apply a torque on you so you're 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 actually gonna like the tendency of your body will be to just line up um and you have to apply a rotational force in the foot or like uh yeah it's rotational it's a difference in lateral between the front and back foot um Whereas if, if, it's adjust, if it's perfectly in line with your center of mass, then there won't be a de any additional torque applied. Um, and so you can just go back. So you get these really interesting effects of as the hand comes across, you have to, like, in order to not just barn door it, like, you have to apply your own um, resistance in an extra force. direction. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Also, I did want to mention one more thing about if you are struggling from the opposite end where you have a tight frame or like a very narrow frame and you want to make it more wide. Um, Brandy, who I really like, um, said that a lot of times you can just raise your elbow and create more of a bubble for yourself. You don't have to wait for your leader to give you that extra space. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great addition. Mm -hmm. Any other things to add on that? Uh, I just wanted to tell a funny story because sometimes I, I also tend to have like the tight frame because I, I don't know, I did lots of Lindy at, at first and stuff. So it, like having a tighter frame was really helpful for that at that speed. And every once in a while when I try to widen my frame and I try to offset my anchor, my leaders tend to think I'm too far away to the side. And so then they get back in front of me and they bring my hand back in front of my belly button. And it's just like this really annoying, like, no, I want to be over here. And then they put it over there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Same thing when you're at a workshop and uh, you you rotate to your new partner and you take hands and then as a tall fellow you want to back up. And I keep my arm pretty tight in those I'm situations because we don't have much room. But I back up because I want some semblance of tension. But then they scoot towards me, mm -hmm. and I'm like, no, I want to, I want to be go away from you. And, and then you're in the middle of the floor. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, oh, hey. <laughs> I saw somebody walking around yesterday with the t-shirt with the knife that sticks out of it. And I feel like cool. maybe I should develop one that has like a toilet plunger that says like, this is as far away from me as you should be right now. Except <laughs> it would have to be collapsible and compression. Telescopic. Yes, the spring. Yeah, mm -hmm. spring-loaded toilet plunger. So like one of those wands that goes <laughs> Yes. Yeah, totally. Oh, man. Once I was in a uh, Viennese waltz formation team and it was like Sleeping Beauty Viennese waltz and I was one of the fairies. So I had a wand. And at the very end, it was just like a rollout, but my wand got caught on my leader's cuff. Oh. <laughs> it was traumatizing, but also hilarious because I was like, ugh, ugh, it didn't, yeah. <laughs> Good times. Is there a video? No, that was, <laughs> uh, I'm old. That was back in the days of the tapes were on VHS. Yeah, Jesse, hey, you, you get it. VHS days. Most of the evidence of my dance training is on VHS. I just ordered one of those cassettes that's supposed to clean the head of your old VHS player so that I can still watch. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> oh. uh, my entire dance journey is digital. <laughs> yeah. It We've existed. known each other 10 years now, Phoenix. I know. 10, I know. Ten years. Years. 10 years, a month, and some change. Oy. I know. I still remember it like it was yesterday. I know it's cheesy, but like I really do. Anyways, onward. Okay. <laughs> All right. You can cry at the end. Okay. Cry later. <laughs> this designated cry session. Yes. Mm. All right, so Great. next question is, does your height affect your styling choices? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Want to go first, Bryn? <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I can, I can go whenever if anybody else has anything to add. Go ahead. Go for no? it. Okay. Go. Um, so, so I feel like it's impacted. I, I feel like it's giving me some really awesome options that I've been able to take advantage of. And I feel like it's given me some things that um, I have to overcome or work harder to be good at. Um, I think I'm gonna start with the hard ones. Uh, the, the biggest one being shaping. Um, I have, most of my height comes from my torso. Um, I'm 5'10", KP is 
my partner KP is six, four and three quarters. Um, and we have the same length torso. So if we sit down, I look him in the eye and I'm like, what's up? And he's like, uh-huh. um, so that means that when I go to shape turn or somebody asks me to do a back bend, side bend, one of those zuki thingies, um, or a duck, that requires way more ab muscle and way more um, just like understanding of where I am in space without using my eyes um, than I would if I were shorter. So I see like, I get really jealous of like Nicole, she goes over, under somebody's arm and I'm like, damn it, why can't you just, nah. for me, it's like, okay, one, one second, I'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So that is an issue because um, I feel like it slows me down, especially if a leader asks me to do something that um, is very circular. That is combined with making level changes a lot harder because it's just so much further down to the ground. Um, So what I'm personally working on right now, especially because of COVID, is just improving my leg strength so that I can change levels comfortably because we do a lot more floor work in West Coast Swing than we used to. But, work your butt. Bot. I don't but. But. Hashtag but. work your butt. Very yes. <laughs> so good. Anything so, else to add? I have my positive ones. Yeah. So the positives come from being able to use a lot more like isolations and body ripples in your body because it's going to show up so much more. Mm -hmm. You have long legs and your rondes are going to look amazing. And if you have a long torso, then like body rolls and like rib cage circles are going to be like extremely visible. You will not have to move as much because it's just going to be like. Hashtag watch all of Rin's movies on YouTube. (laughs) Um, I feel like stopping and standing still is um, much more impactful Mm. on a frame my size than for somebody smaller. And um, I also feel like, and I don't know this for sure because I have been this height since I was eight years old. Um, What? Yeah. (laughs) Wow. You want to talk about that? I've never met anyone that went faster than I did. (laughs) Touche. School dances sucked. sucked. (laughs) but um but i feel like leaders see me stopping and pay attention to it with greater acuity um because it's a bigger picture so i that that has been um a, a lovely when i think about styling that's been a wonderful asset and um trendelin veal is my uh idol for stop activity uh-huh. She is really good at that. Now you can go too far in that direction and, and stop the flow of the dance. But, um, but I think that that one's really valuable. I'm, I, on the sad end of the spectrum, um, I'm sad that the extension of my arms um, is a picture that's really large and, and not genuinely loved by our dance. Whereas shorter arm, cause I have super long arms, shorter armed followers can get away with some of those extensions. Um, that makes me sad sometimes. Um, but it's okay to be sad. <laughs> Good ending to that statement. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. Anyone else have anything to add? No? Mm. Okay. So, kind of piggybacking on that, what coping mechanism do you use most frequently to manage your connection as a tall follow? Ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Mine is just the same, the same that I've mentioned earlier, which is just like maintaining accuracy to the turn radiuses that I'm given. That's been my big one. Mine has also been mentioned before, just like the degree of self-empowered movement um i just have like i am much more self-driven than partner driven um (laughs) which yeah lets me move myself as far as i need to as fast as i need to and i also sit through dips a lot of the time 
yeah. I always would prefer a heavier connection just personally, but I tend to lighten it up and adjust my pitch slightly and slightly disconnect unless it's I'm dancing with someone that I know I can trust and can dance the way I would prefer. But just in general, I tend to make myself lighter on my feet and control myself more. And that's how I compensate. It feels empowering to me to discover within the first few moments of a dance where home base connection level is going to be and that then I can use the increase of it or the decrease of it to know um, when, how far to move myself and how fast to move myself, which I touched on a little bit earlier, but when it comes to maintaining connection, I like to, I like to establish where, where neutral is going to be. So that if, for instance, we're getting ready to anchor and neutral gets a little bit heavier, I know that I should be moving myself faster over my left side so that I could be ready to go. And, um, and that applies to every single follower ever, but the consequences of it for uh, uh, taller followers with a shorter leader are even more influential. I know that we've got at least one beloved short leader in the workshop today. So I, I feel like I would like to say out loud that you do not need to wait to your connection more simply because I am taller. You can ask for your home base wherever it's comfortable for you. And I'm a big fan of both leader and follower sort of adjusting to wherever that is. Not leaders doing it, not followers doing it, but everybody sort of finding a consensus. It's empowering to me that if it's getting heavier than I want, I go. No matter whether the situation suggests that I should be staying, I go. The one beautiful thing about being a follower is that I do not have to sustain more weight than I wish to. I can simply change direction. Maintain your truth. Yeah. yeah. It can be fun though when you have a follow who can perfectly counterbalance you to really depend on that weight and, and play with it in unique ways. Um, so that's something that I enjoy leading, which actually brings me to one of our other questions, which is on the list. All of us here dance both roles. So um, yeah, what was the actual question about that, Alicia? Is that partly because of your height? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, interesting. Ooh. I you definitely got that. encouraged Mino. to start because of my height. Um, I don't know if that's why I enjoy it or not. Um, but yeah, as the, as a tall follow I, and there was, you know, oftentimes an imbalance. Uh, so I would, I would try to lead and I, I get encouragement. It's like, oh, you're so nice. Like you, you really uh, are, you feel similar to the other leaders in the room or whatever it is. And I had a little bit of natural advantage there, I guess. So I got a lot more positive reinforcement, but I don't actually have a clear image of how much that influenced me deciding to continue or not. I think Kim was wondering what the question was earlier. Yeah, sorry, I missed the question. Oh, it was, um, is the fact that you dance both roles partly due to your height? Oh, interesting. I think this one was more relevant to the follow dominant yeah. ones, <laughs> but uh, if you have a different take on it, happy to hear. I only lead because society. Mm -hmm. But you're so good. <laughs> we both, uh, we're both follow dominant when we like don't dance I, I adapt, together. I, adapt. I, just like, mm. I adapt to the world that is given to me and then I change it to make it how I want it. Ooh, Ooh um, good quote. <laughs> yeah, I change the world from the inside. Uh, I, I feel like I have spent um, a large part of my life struggling to not feel masculine because of my size. Mm. Um, and the fact that I also um, am quite a strong human um, and am, can easily be in charge, I have managerial instincts as well, makes me suited in some respects more to leading than to following. Um, so I would say that part of why I learned to lead was because that seemed to suit all of those things, um, but that that was a little bit of a struggle for me and still is. In my identity as a leader, um, I, I don't quite know where to strike the balance with my own femininity. Um, and I know that I teach a lot of, of students these days who are um, dancing, 
that we're not attaching gender to the roles, except for we all have some confluence of gender. And it can be a real struggle to decide as a follower or as a leader, how much of that is going to come to play when I, as I make decisions as a dancer. So um, I, I was a teacher before I started leading. So that's what made me learn to lead. But I would say that it was definitely influential. Yeah. I mean, uh, gender performativity and masculine and feminine and all that was like really, really forced on me a lot when I was a follower. I was always told like, you need to look more feminine when you're following. I'm like, no, mm -hmm. I don't. I performed um, the, oops, continue. Oh yeah. But like, I, I definitely felt a lot of pressure to look certain ways, or I've also had the people tell me the opposite direction where it's like, well, you're a guy, so you need to look masculine while you're following. I'm like, no, I want to be me. Thank you. Yeah, right. Like I will, I will take, I, I will accept when people give me kind of more definitives that are neutral in the space, like, you know, talking about toes versus heels or whatever and why, not necessarily saying because it's more feminine or masculine or whatever, I'm like, I don't give a shit about that. I'm sorry, I don't care about that. Um, but, you know, if they're giving me solid reasons, like I will develop my dance to be what I feel. Mm -hmm. gender norms anyway oh yeah I, I remember and I think because you've known me that long Phoenix because I used to dance socially so much more and in part that's because that's what I was asked to do like and when I first started I was one of the only women leading in the on the west coast and it was so novel and I was so good at it that people just assumed that because I did it and I was good at it, that that was my preferred role. And I got pigeonholed into this really awkward social situation where all of these women were asking me to lead them, but I still preferred following and always have. Um, and I'm wondering if anyone else has dealt with any similar kind of gender-based issues around what their preferred role is. And I know Phoenix, you've already spoken to that, so you, you don't have to keep going. Oh, I have more. Oh, go, go. I'll always have more. <laughs> no, I mean, I want to I want to give other people a chance if they have things before I just start listing grievances. I have a interesting experience of like I was doing some of the earlier female led routines in the California area and I was one of the first like female leads to do the WSDC sanctioned Jack and Jill's and all this stuff and still on the social floor, if I ask a follower to dance, they go, oh no, I like to, I like to follow. Like they think I'm asking them to lead me um, or I'll be rotating around in workshops as a leader. And almost every time they go, are you gonna lead it? So I still get a lot of people questioning whether or not I understand the rotation or what, what I'm asking for. Yeah. I've, I've had that too. I'll have people like give me weird looks in the rotation because they don't know me. And they're and like, they give me that, are you in the right line thing? And I'm like, in my mind, I'm just sitting there like, just put your hand in my hand and you'll see. <laughs> I'm going to start way. saying that. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a particularly interesting experience when it's in a Jack and Jill prelim. Because mm. yeah, occasionally I lead an advanced Jack and Jill because why not? Um, but a follow who doesn't know who I am will rotate to me and the look they give me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the skepticism is always so horrifying. Like uh, people get really nervous for me. They're like, do you, do you know you're supposed to be, are you on the correct row? Like, are you mm -hmm. in the right place? Have you talked to the judges? <laughs> yeah. I mean, luckily getting up to all stars, it's all your friends at that point. So they all know you. But yeah, they all get it. Unless you go to Europe, then they don't know you. Nails, hair, hips, whatever that amazing song was. I listened so, to that today. So good. <laughs> if you ever watch a follower show a leader a song, go <laughs> to um, Swing Vester 2019 into 2020. Um, it was epic. It was epic. Very fun. Yes. Was it the one with Florian? Yes. Yes, with Florian. Yeah. 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 I'll try to link that above in the replay. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't yeah, I need to get to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
anything else to add? Yeah, it really, I think my experience of this is, is interesting just because I think I got seen initially following a lot in competition, but then I led a lot on the social floor. And so there's this, I don't know, odd balance of, of uh, perception, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but it is still weird. Like there are some nights where I just mostly want to follow. Um, those are less common. But on those nights, it's like, oh, this is more difficult. <laughs> like not only as a follower, but as a follower who doesn't present in a feminine way. Um, yeah, just like interesting. Yeah. yeah, it was a it was a big struggle growing up. Where um, growing up in a a darker time in West Coast mm -hmm. before it was more common, because um, like I would be dancing. And I had to like overcome the fear first off of, you know, asking a guy to dance and like the, the potential tragedy that could come off of that. And then on top of that, I had to also actively avoid the women that were going to want to ask me. Mm. So like, I kind of had this double battle going all the time. Yeah. And, you know, I still feel like I'm recovering it from it to some degree because like I have honed such amazing aversion skills off of it i'm really good at avoiding people <laughs> and i'm like i'm too good at avoiding people now and they seem cold <laughs> but yeah i know what you mean because i i do the same thing because still even to this day people are like i want to follow her and i'm just like but i want to i want to follow other people i like yeah. following um I remember for the longest time I would correct people be like no I'm a follow dominant I prefer following and I'd always get this really almost aggressive like well why is that back and I don't know why I would always get that kind of aggressive reaction but for the longest time I didn't have the language to explain why I preferred following until I started relating it to introversion versus extroversion and uh whichever uh side of that line you fall into depend it it's where you get your energy. So if you're extroverted, you gain energy by being around people. If you're introverted, you gain energy by being by yourself. And for me, I gain energy following, I lose it leading. So if I have a really fulfilling like hour of following, I will then immediately follow it with like my best half hour of leading in months because I have filled my following well um, with energy, not just like physically, but um, emotionally and stuff. So. That's yeah. an interesting segue for me because sometimes when I feel like I'm having a bad tall follower night, I'll switch to leading, regain some confidence where my height is not ever considered derogatory, and then mm -hmm. can switch back around and somehow own myself differently. And leaders who would have given me an inferior experience, that sounds terrible, <laughs> give me an experience. <laughs> um, my way of carrying myself or the energy that I deliver is changed and I can have a better experience literally with the same person later that night by using my role reversal to, to help get out of a funk. And, and it's a reason to learn to lead if you're a follow only right now. Mm -hmm. I think that, that role reset is, applies in the leading direction as well. If you're a leader, learn to follow gives that gives it reset in the same way or similar way. Yeah. Following fills. <laughs> oh, it requires so much trust though. Ah! <laughs> we all live in our own places on that spectrum. Uh, isn't that uh, one of the wonderful things about following though? I mean, I feel like that difficulty of, of creating trust. I mean, I always tell people that whatever we're working on in life is what we're working on in dancing. Um, and I feel like that's part of what drives me to want to be a better follower is that I, I struggle to give over and trust and make myself vulnerable. And the beauty of, of everybody on this panel is that we have grown from that being a, a difficult thing to do to something that we look forward to in the following. Yeah. 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 That was profound. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great response. Anyone else have anything to add? 
I don't even remember what the question was at this point. <laughs> We're moving on. <laughs> I would like to say something really quickly. It doesn't have anything to do with like my own personal experience, but I just want to like thank the people who are here and also people who pioneered degendering West Coast Swing in the first place because that is a very socially difficult thing to do. It's extremely intimidating at first and it really opened the door for everybody to express themselves more truthfully and like we really... Like the, the community owes y'all a debt. We really appreciate it. Yeah. A lot of Same. people. I still remember once my uh, male strictly partner dumped me day of at Eastery Swing. And me and my best friend, Mackenzie Grover, who does not really dance in the scene anymore, we're like, yeah, let's do it. And then we went to sign up and we learned that it was against the rules to strictly as two women. Um, funny story, this is also how I met Jessica Cox. And I didn't know who she was at the time. I was a baby dancer. Uh, so we got into the elevator. We were complaining about it. And she was all like, if you start a petition, I'll sign it. I had no idea who she was. So fast forward a few months when I figured it all out, I was retroactively excited and horrified. It's hilarious. Um, <laughs> but to go from that 10 years ago to now, I, I will sometimes be really struck when I'm at a dance event and there are so many people dancing uh, the, the role opposite to their gender expectations. And I will actually start crying because it's amazing. Because really until Phoenix came along, uh, I was the only one in the Pacific Northwest uh, dancing both roles. And to see how it's grown is just so incredible. And I can't wait to see where it goes from here. So I'm, I'm also very grateful to all of you guys. I, I feel like I mostly came in at the tail end of that and only benefited uh, <laughs> I'm very grateful for <laughs> and like Phoenix I don't know if I've actually told you this story before directly but like seeing you compete as a follower at Swingtacular my first year in 2017 like I saw you and I was like oh I'd like to do that that's great yeah. I'd like to like that's what inspired me to like start following and like try to get through novice and intermediate only as a follower and like really just do that so well i'm gonna go cry bye i know i'm <laughs> crying too <laughs> uh, well that was very lovely um if anyone else has anything to add have we gone through all the questions Okay, uh, does anybody on the panel have a topic they wanna to cover before we open it up to Q&A with the, the peanut gallery? Yes. Um, we've talked about tall followers, but the other half of this coin is um, less statured leaders. And I'd be curious what your favorite, um, I don't know, trick or skill that you have to go down rather than to talk only about going up. Uh, I'd be really curious to hear about that. I feel like short, shorter leaders when dancing with tall followers have the option of doing the level changes themselves. So you can do that cool thing. I don't know who does it. I forget. I forget. But like, you know, you can go under my leg. You can do the windmill thingy. And that looks really cool, but it's actually really easy. Um, because our, of our height difference, so. Hugo, Hugo yeah. does some of Hugo. that. Hugo, yes. Yes. I remember once in an All-American, I drew Bob Ack. I know you've drawn him as well, Bryn, in an All-American. Oh, yeah. But yeah. I kicked, I just, I kicked over him at one point, and it was, <laughs> you it have was great. <laughs> you have the grand ones. I, I, I do. I try not to hit myself <laughs> in the nose. I wish I had that problem. Yeah, it's an awkward problem to have just mm -hmm. randomly punching yourself with various limbs yeah yeah it's not great yeah. Yeah. i do have to control when i get excited because i'll flail places and hit people remember that one time we dipped each other in the same direction phoenix yeah it was, we it got, was just so, like we just we got stuck down. yeah we both matrixed in the same direction perfectly counterbalanced each other and then we got stuck our heads were like an inch or two from the we floor like that. and we oh, kind of looked at each other and we were like yeah we were like tangled 
in the feet and then like our heads were landing yeah. down like we were just stuck like this on the floor yeah like, supporting and, each other like right and then all of a sudden this shadow looms towards us and christian Jones just like steps over us and bends over he's like how you doing down there like it's great help us out yeah. <laughs> it's been a while since we've been this close to the floor <laughs> yeah yeah. Uh, anyways, back to your question, Tessa. I, I love keeping my frame just shorter and keeping a much tighter and wider slot when I'm dancing with a shorter leader. And that just makes a huge difference because I feel like just keeping it closer and wider, like adding that, that third dimension more so than length makes a huge difference when I'm dancing with someone shorter than me in both directions. I, I tend to bell the end of my slot. Is if I can't get length this way, then I can find length on either or width yep. on either end. Mm -hmm. um, which today is West Coast swing is super popular anyway. So um, I I think that that's a really fun way to play, and oftentimes helps break the ice towards them feeling like they're doing a good job. And then that opens the door to them leading other things that sometimes are comfortable and sometimes aren't. But yeah, from a leader's yeah. perspective, I love it when follows do that because it allows me to do so much more interesting things going into the next pattern when the follow is in a different position and shaped in, in a different way than normal. It just naturally preps something new that I didn't have to think too hard about to lead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like that's that's a a great thing for leaders who run out of space to give. Uh, which happens with short leaders, I think, and that you can both basically spiral around a center point. Um, like the leader, not only can the follower bell, like the leader can match and counter. And you can create interesting continuity of movement, um, even if you're out of arm. Um, also, I think, uh, oh man, what's his name? Arthur from the Pacific Northwest? Arthur Long? Arthur Long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he was one of the first uh, shorter leaders where I felt super, super comfortable turning because he has a, I think he has a really fine sense of um, adjusting his radius of turn. Um, like if he can't reach past the follower's head, right? He's like tuned the turning uh, in a smaller radius, which I think is a really a useful skill for a, a, a not as height advantage leader. Yeah. And I will say it is possible to be a much shorter leader and to lead tall follows incredibly well. The leader I'm thinking of in particular is Miles Monroe. I mm -hmm. love following him so much. Even his ducks and neck rolls often feel better to me than when I'm following someone my height or taller because of mm -hmm. how attuned he is to the needs of managing that space. Points. All right, any other panelist ideas for topics before we open it up for Q&A? Uh, I think that's a no. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz hands. Uh, all right, so uh, Great for, those topic. <laughs> for those of you uh, joining us, it is now open for questions. So do we have the raise your hand function, Alicia, or should we just have people like say <laughs> I have a question in the chat and then we can tell them to unmute themselves? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Well, that's a clap. All right. So uh, <laughs> uh, if you have a question for any of our wonderful panelists, just say I have a question in the chat um, and then we'll call on you and you can unmute yourself and or uh, turn on your video to ask your question. We stare with anticipation <laughs> at the chat. Mm -hmm. it's Someone it's ask a question. Yeah. Some other hey. dancers for a while. I've been al al alone <laughs> with yeah. my students for so long. <laughs> it's kind of nice. So while we're kind of waiting on people to ask any questions they want to ask, um, do we want to cover one more question for you guys? Sure. Sure. So I think let's let's talk maybe 
Um, thoughts about posting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. Controversy. <laughs> Let the um, tension please, build. Please, please mm -hmm. do it. Please learn to do it by using your own feet to stop your own momentum and uh, and leave your arms where they are, wherever they happen to be at that point in time, leave them there and use your feet to stop yourself um, and preferably before you would like me to be able to change direction. So um, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that before part is so important and it reminds me of what you were talking about earlier tessa in that uh we don't necessarily need more power behind anything but i often find we need a little bit more time so like i really enjoy a leader who will post like a little bit earlier than the standard just so i have the time to resolve whatever energy i've got going on and respond uh promptly to what my leader's asking of me yeah. i have an 80. oh no she she frozen. Frozen. Oh, no. Start over, Tessa, you froze. How to use your feet to stop. Oh, no. Ready? Oh, good. Okay. No. Okay. I think you're ah, back now. You're back now. Um, uh, I have an 85 pound dog that you can borrow to learn how to um, deal with momentum in opposition. I love it. Really good for that. I will yes. get, I'll get them out for you. I love that. Katie, do you have a question Hi, for Katie. us? Sure. Yeah, I have a question. Um, so I, I occasionally have a tall woman who in a class who has had a lifetime of hunching over because she's tall. So it's so just saying to her, you know, you know, be a, be a queen, be tall, whatever, like she's been hunching for 30 years. So how do I help her to change that? Great question. Uh, that's a great question and a big one. Does anyone want to go first? Did you hear the question, Tessa? I did. Okay. So, so I have a question to follow up to further diagnose. Um, is the hunching a behavioral hunching or is it more of a general postural hunching? P postural. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> okay, I have a thing. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get out of bed. For oh, this. I know exactly what you're gonna do. Yep. <laughs> I do this before competitions because I have like a head thing, you know, that I do a lot. So basically the idea, if I can get some sort of an angle here, you find a flat wall mm -hmm. and you kick up your heels all the way to the wall, flat foot, getting your butt against, flattening the pelvis, pulling in, thinking kind of like a, like a corset. I know what those feel like now. Um, of course, it. Uh, you want to find maybe a little bit of connection through the mid back. Oh, you can still have <laughs> underneath. Taking your uh, uh, what is it? The occipital oh, knob, yeah. right? That little knob right there at the back of your head. I'm gonna put that as much up against the wall. That's going to tuck your chin in, and so it's almost like you're you're nodding down. And basically, we're hyper correcting the posture. And then once you're there. The goal is you go through, like I do these three exercises. First one is flaps. So in trying to keep my shoulder blades roughly in contact with the wall as I move up and down. So they'll kind of scissor as they move. And basically just doing these big angel flaps, maintaining that posture. And it's gonna feel weird. Like you're gonna be, feel yourself pressing through uh, your toes, working your way back in there. Anyway, we do these ones. And, you know, you do eight to 10 or those. Then you move into these guys where you just kind of like kind of do the see no evil and working in and out. And then the third one is ladder climb. So you kind of imagine you're inside of a tube and you're working your way up. And again, trying to keep that shoulder contact to the wall. And basically what it is, is um, it's a dynamic movement through a new posture. So you're kind of tricking your brain into holding that posture through movement. And then if you go through like three or four cycles of this, and it should take, you know, maybe five minutes or so, do it to a song, time it to a song, right? Give yourself a practice working through spacing out timing and measuring time. Um, but once you have that, when you step away from the wall, you'll be like, oh my gosh, what is this new world? Because <laughs> you'll be like, ah, I'm standing yeah. like this. And again, it's kind of an overcorrection because 
you will relax back into something a little bit more natural. Um, and I've been doing that with some of my uh, private lesson students um, fairly consistently. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this actually works when I do it. So that's a, that's a yeah. technique you can try. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is posture is something that's useful for all of everybody. So rather than pointing out, hey, you tall woman, you need to do work on your posture, which I would never do anyway. But I guess uh, to approach it as something that all the students should be working on and then give them the exercises to practice at home. Um, okay, but is there anything else? Um, I, I have something to add if nobody else does. Yeah, I do as well. Go for it. Um, no, you go first. It can be worth acknowledging that if it's a held posture that she's had for a very long time and not a reactive posture, that could just be her body's structure now because uh, after the body supports a certain position for a while different muscles get strengthened others are extended and it might not be something that can be fixed in a dance setting it might need physical therapy or correction um in from a from a professional yeah that's actually exactly what i was going to say so if you have her do that exercise that phoenix just shared with you and she experiences a lot of pain doing that that's indicative that she needs uh further support um and i know personally, um, I have a similar issue and it comes from a, a imbalanced muscle set. So the muscles on the front of my body are really tight and they tend to pull me forward and the muscles on the back of my body are stretched and not as strong. So actually uh, relaxing and stretching out the muscles on the front and then strengthening the muscles on the back has been what I've been doing to balance that issue. And um, your student might be dealing with a similar uh, kind of thing. Um, and if you want any more resource resources, feel free to like message myself um, or I, I assume anybody else on this panel, if um, you want some further help with this going forward for your student, because I know posture is really deeply rooted in health and stuff and yeah. making sure to balance those two things is really important. Because I remember once, a oh, horrible story, I, I was at a workshop a few months after a really bad car wreck. And so I was in this position, not because I wanted to be, but the teacher came up and held my forehead and shoved my uh, upper back mm -hmm. forward and uh, it was excruciating. <laughs> it's like I'm in this position for a reason right now but um, especially when it's the spine in the neck that, that I wish more people understood the health stuff behind that. So and something that really helped me after being in a car accident um, where I had some nerve damage and engaging behind the shoulder blades actually like, shot lightning down my arms. Um, and so I was standing in this position and kind of dancing in this position because it was what was safest for me. Um, and taking a lesson for me, it was with Sean McKeever. He worked with me to find like five other ways to create connection. And I felt uh, really empowered because they were giving me other variables to work with that meant that a fixed set posture that isn't the normative posture can still be a good connection and still and still move around the floor. So empowering her to work with as many potential variables as possible. Uh, that's exactly what I wanted to chime in on is when I think about the broad spectrum of bodies that I work with on a daily basis, um, none of them have it all set up just right. And to discover, I feel like somebody who has lived in that state for a long time, there are um, guaranteed psychological ties to that shape. And that sometimes discovering success in dance can be the thing that unlocks the opportunity for them to start owning their height again. Um, so while that may not be possible to address in a group setting, uh, that person might be worthwhile um, devoting a couple of extra minutes to, to I don't know, start to peel back some of those layers and see whether there's something that you can unlock in them um, through confidence building or, um, or just acknowledging their existence. Oftentimes I feel like taller people who tend to do this are trying to um, not exist because that was the safest thing for them. And to be told that they're wonderful and that you know that they're there, sometimes that can be enough to just open, open that floodgate. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Great. These are all great. Thank you. Yeah, of course. 
Thank you for helping your students. Okay, so yeah, there was a chat that just said, Cassie, I've been told this issue is very common with people. Yeah, are. that kind of front, because the body just gets entrained into that position. Yeah. Um, but then as an extension of what Tessa just said, is like the body can somatically hold on to trauma. So sometimes it's not that we've physically entrained ourselves into positions or into particular um, muscle tightening. It could instead be traumatically related and you're, you're holding that because of a past trauma. So like if you go to experience or try a new movement and you experience pain, that's a sign that you need help medically, mechanically. But if you find yourself experiencing an extreme emotion out of nowhere after doing a movement, that's a, a symptom that you probably have some trauma that you haven't processed. And that's another thing to see someone uh, about because that's, that's a big deal. And <laughs> I know having my own trauma therapy in the past year has been transformative for me. So it's, it's, something to pay attention to if you have extreme emotional reactions to any sort of movement or postures in your body. Um, Katie, I'll just say one last thing. There is a practitioner in our dance community named Megan Dupree, who um, is both a dancer and an extremely knowledgeable and, and genius body worker. So if it turns out that you would like some more mechanical advice, specifically from a dance brain, I would really recommend Megan Dupree. I know that she's doing online stuff these days, so it doesn't matter that she's in, in another state venue. Um, All right, does anybody else joining us today have a question? At this point, just unmute yourself and ask your question if you have one, because we're probably gonna start wrapping up in the next 15 minutes. Uh, I'm going to add one last thing. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, dressing a tall body is <sighs> not the same thing as dressing a shorter body. Amen. Dressing a long torso is not the same thing as dressing long legs. And I support you to look to the advanced and all-star um, comps for some ideas about how to dress your taller bodies. Um, Wear black. That's mm -hmm. one option, um, but I, I also, I'll just throw out a couple of things. Um, waist defining uh, imagery, so like a belt or a top that has colors that are slightly different on the top than the bottom, um, can be really helpful for distributing weight. I mean, just, I shouldn't say that, distributing size visually. Um, longer sleeves can help distribute size uh and i think that unfortunately we're living in an era of lots of leggings and boots being really popular but oftentimes expanding the visual of the lower half of your leg via something that's more boot cut um, can be really effective at helping make yourself look um, balanced and that that becomes not just an asset to judging, et cetera, but to how your partners perceive you as whether you look like something they can handle or something that they can't, which is just, you know, it's strange, but humans are really impacted by those visuals. So, um, and as Deborah Seke once told me beautifully, having some piece of your garment be movement, have movement to it, um, can be really effective. So I, I recommend that you go out there and start thinking, about how to dress yourself for your size because it can help with confidence maybe even more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Also off of that, um, if you are a tall person and you have long legs, then, well, I, I should speak from a torso perspective first and then add the long legs. Um, if you have a really long torso, then choosing long shirts actually fit very well um, versus I'm assuming, especially like looking at some of the longer legged followers choosing long pants or like elongating pants, especially maybe with high waists are a really good way to show off your legs if you get most of your height from your legs. If you do it the other way around, it looks surprisingly strange sometimes. Don't go back and watch some videos of me from, from when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, complimenting that ratio whichever your strength is, you usually yeah. want to highlight the strength as opposed to 
highlighting the imbalance. Mm -hmm. Because then it'll make your body look even, not even more, but it will make it look more abnormal. Mm -hmm. And then for those of you who are like myself, who are very tall and also plus size, I see you and know how impossible it is to find clothes that fit the West Coast swing aesthetic. It is a nightmare. And it's actually something I wish judges were more aware of because I've gotten flack for not wearing like the right thing. And I'm like, doesn't exist in my size. If it does, it's like $200, no thanks. I'd rather go out for a weekend than buy one garment. <laughs> so um, yeah, so finding your own style is also really important. And if it doesn't fit like what it's supposed to look like in our community, I, that's okay. Like our community you is to expand. <laughs> yeah. What did you say? It was so fast. I, the, I, was, I said, be the trendsetter. Yes, that. Fashion is a social construction. <laughs> Wait, damn, I missed that. What did you say? Fashion is a social construction, as is as our most. Oh people. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Have you seen the things that go on the runway? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I have, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. Any more questions from anyone on the Zoom call? Um, one more, I think. Um, I feel like a lot of the things that we've talked about today have either significant reciprocals for short followers or actually have a lot of the same important um, themes. So if like we could talk about that for a little bit. I know there are some short followers here who might be just curious, um, but I feel like there is a lot that we could just quickly cover for anybody who experiences height disadvantage from the opposite direction. Hey, Alicia, you wanna chime in? Um, I suppose I can. I mean, I'm, I'm average, but I can talk about it. Um, I think that a lot of the things that you all talked about today are extremely relevant. Um, you know, uh, especially the, like the first thing for me that comes to mind is like the, the power behind things, you know, um, I feel like, you know, myself, I tend to get a lot of extra energy as well. And I feel like it's, it's not necessary to give someone a lot of energy, no matter what their height is. Um, what should be happening is uh, they should have that body flight um, to assist with that. So there should not have to be, you know, a ton of momentum. Um, yeah, that's my initial thoughts. <laughs> Basically, everybody works too hard. Yeah. yeah, that's oh, yeah. actually really true. Yeah, <laughs> like literally everybody. West yeah. Coast Swing is so much easier than you're making it. It feels yeah. so much better than you are working right now. I promise. Yeah. yeah, I can sum up every lesson I teach in you're working too hard. Yes. Chill. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. Yeah. Okay. I think that um, owning one space the way Phoenix and Tim were talking about is just as important if you're a, a shorter follower as if you're a taller follower. Um, and that the mechanism, the technical mechanism to do that is exactly the same. If you don't know what that means, um, take a virtual lesson with somebody on this panel or go to your local pro and find out about it. Um, those concepts that we talked about, and I'll just review some of them, wit, uh, three dimensions to the slot, the idea that the tension or the weight in the hand is an indication of speed and size of step. Um, being able to decipher whether a turn should take place tightly and fast or uh, over a distance and slower. These concepts will help with following and are just as valuable. Um, but I think the last thing that I would say is that whereas we all have mass to help us create counterbalance, you may need to use more physical strength through your feet and through your butt so if you haven't yet discovered how to connect to the floor, how to push into the floor, to activate muscle, to be able to create counterbalance without it having to come from your upper body, um, I, would, I would highly support you to invest in that work. And that's for everybody, but definitely if you cannot simply use your body weight to, to be able to withstand counterbalance. Great point. 
I think one one thing that I'll add, um, slightly different, remembering from a previous uh, topic that I just missed. Um, a note to leaders dealing with taller followers, you don't have to go over the head. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, like you don't have to lead an underarm turn. You don't have to lead something and maintain the connection the whole way through. You can you can free turn it. You can mm -hmm. you can modify uh, to a yep. shoulder level. You can exactly right. You can lead at the shoulder on outside turns, um, um, and then do like the shoulder trace. Yeah, watch some of the juniors um, comps with the leaders <laughs> junior as the junior um, Piper's son. Uh, uh, Mike, Mike, Micah, Mike, Mike, uh, Malachi. Yeah. Malachi, there we go. Yes. Yeah. He, he and his mom have some videos out there, or at least they used to, and that's some great examples of pattern usage where you mm -hmm. can't get over the head. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause like part of my world is as a follower, I should never have to dodge, duck, dip, dive, dodge, warp, thrust, like whatever to get under an arm that you Watch asked me warp. to do. <laughs> yeah. The detail that I feel like always gets left out is like sometimes a follow's elbow is out to get you if the leader has put your hand behind your head. That's going to lift my elbow up into murder space. Oh, like yeah. if you put my hand here, that's where it's going to go. You asked for it. You asked for it. Um, we had a comment in the chat. As a short follower, I have issues when people don't write lead hide height correctly. There's something about that English that doesn't make quite. Sorry, right. Yeah, I know. Lead. But yeah, well, adjusting. So people lead me over my head as though I'm really tall versus like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. So yeah. expecting yeah. you to have more space, oh, like the that. average followers bubble. Yeah. I feel like one of the things that doesn't get like emphasized enough is how on on average the follow is the static variable in the equation yes. because their their frame is much more consistent so that way they can be driven like imagine if you were riding a bike and the handlebars were mm -hmm. bad news um whereas <laughs> whereas the the leaders are are the variable that's constantly changing to adjust to that frame mm -hmm. And so if you think of your follow and their frame more as like tricycle handlebars that you're manipulating um, and trying to maintain the integrity of their frame and the height of it and only change it for very specific reasons, um, your, your follow will feel a lot more comfortable in your connection and they will trust you more and then they will give you more connection because I don't know about anybody else here, but as soon as I realize that the leader isn't gonna adjust to me, I remove some of their ability to control me. And we'll just keep scaling back. On that line, June, um, own your uh, own the ability to let go of the hand if it's too mm -hmm. high for you. So if they're if they're leading something that's beyond your reach, do not ex if you start extending yourself to try and maintain connection, you're not helping them to know that it's not working for you. If you allow it to literally let go of your own hand, they may come back down to the height that you need. As, and as long as you do that, looking at them and smiling, then then everything goes better. Yeah. And something that I wish had been told to me on my day one is as a follow, I have the right to not follow anything, regardless of how it's led. Even if it's led well, even if it's led poorly, I have the right to not follow something. And really having the confidence to not follow something is an important skill to build up uh, as a follow. Mm -hmm. Also quickly for like the leader side, I know that it can be very difficult to um, figure out what the right dimensions are for your follower, especially if you're new to West Coast Swing. But if you focus on, um, instead, in, instead of focusing on the moves that you have been taught and the motions that you are trying to think of as correct, if you think only in terms of your followers movement and pay very close attention to whether their body mechanics look comfortable, then you will wind up leading way more effectively and it'll be easier for both of you. And then people like June and Alicia and everybody else really um, will have a much better time um, executing everything as well. Yeah, listen yeah. listen to the feedback of, of what you're putting into the system, like the follower mm -hmm gives you a system and it's interesting because in dancing it's kind of the one place where you 
um, at least earlier on, will just blindly follow directions instead of paying attention to the system. Like when you drive a car, you know if the accelerator is sensitive or not sensitive, you adjust based on that, right? You're, you're working how it works versus like, okay, press the accelerator. Boom, <laughs> flat about, no matter what, right? So, you know, you listen to the systems of the things that you use. Uh, same with shopping carts. It's got a sticky wheel that goes, right? You make your adjustment based on that sticky wheel. That, that's yeah. ducks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, with dancing, people tend to be like, I have been prescribed a thing that I must do. Mm -hmm. And you're more mm -hmm. focused on your own movement rather than the, the production of what you're creating. Yep. Yeah. And for leaders, especially focusing on the production of your movements is, is really key, especially in the beginning. Also, pro tip, if you want to learn how to lead well, get a wheelie chair or a shopping cart and pull it around. Because that is exactly what your connection should feel like when you're leading a literal human. Not to say that followers are objects like shopping carts or chairs. We have feelings and minds. I, but, I tend to you know. think that shopping, yeah, shopping carts cart. have feelings. Yes. That, that. Mm -hmm. I uh, just want to say that it has been such a pleasure to discuss dance again. I haven't talked about dance like this since March or February, I and I need to hop off. Um, I miss so. you. Yeah. Thank Sorry. you so much for joining us. Yeah, yeah thank seriously, you. thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. I probably need to head out soon too, yeah. because I have homework. <laughs> so. I guess this is last thoughts time. Is there anything anyone wants to spit into the void? It's very dark over here. In normal life, I would tell you if you had talk follower questions that you should just come up to me. Um, but this means that you should now message us instead. Yes, yes absolutely. And, and some of you have watched, but but have friends who are tall. And if you feel like they this would help them, please share it with them because I know that we used to have a feedback loop to help people and that that's, that's one of the things that COVID has sort of severed for the moment. So um, we're not, none of us is scary. Phoenix, maybe a little, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> none of us is scary. <laughs> um, and, still uh, like it is. And, uh, and please reach out to us. And if we feel, because I think everybody here is also a professional, if we feel like we can't answer that question without enough time, um, like that uh, we need a lesson's worth of time in order to answer that question. We will say that to you up front so that you don't feel like you're taking advantage of our time. Yeah. And are we all available for uh, virtual private lessons over the yeah. Zooms? Yes, absolutely. Cool. So. Thank you very much. Oh. The East Coast says good night because it's dark. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all Thank so you all. much for joining us. Mm -hmm. yeah, thanks. Bye. Amazing. thanks for having us. Bye. 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 It's going to be hard remembering to look here when I'm talking because you are all over here. I even have a prop cat. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sir. You should unmute yourself. <laughs> if I must. Hi, I didn't see you there because like my view is all wonky and, and you're hidden. <laughs> Sneak attack. Sneak attack. <laughs> I love it. I know I should I should put this on my I should put this on my big screen and then I'll have your big huge giant faces. But then I'm also going to like be looking there instead of oh you're fine I, i've got the worst situation for that so oh great you, yeah you yeah, get, yeah you're looking you get my profile the side. i love it yeah i love it <laughs> it's a wonderful angle tim can you hear us perfect okay <gasps> audio we hear you now sir you. <laughs> okay there we go oh i mean i i keep finding my light so that's nice <laughs> It makes me look up, isn't it nice? Helpful. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yes. There Can we you go. hear us? Oh my gosh, that is a fancy. Yay! Technology works. I'm like geeking out over your microphone.
Tim. Is that your microphone? Right. It's like so old school. It's great. Yeah, it oh, looks God. very fancy. It's actually pretty cheap. So nice. Best of both worlds. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, same. <laughs> Did you have to get a new laptop, Phoenix, or were you able to resuscitate the audio? So kind of both worlds. <laughs> Uh, I, I got a new laptop, um, and then the old one, like the sound came back to life. So like a Phoenix, my, my, my other laptop came back. So now I have a really, um, expensive laptop purchase that I shouldn't have done, but Hey, I have a really nice laptop now, so we'll make it work. All right. Have we heard from Bryn besides she, she the excessive she's bananas? Banana. She's in the waiting room. Oh, she's in the waiting room. Uh, okay. Simple. I'm assuming that would be Michaela Jackson Anderson. Oh, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's probably like a parent's account or something. Yeah. There she well, is. Her, her name is Michaela. Oh, I didn't know that. The things you learn. The more you know. I don't have enough shins to express this. So glad I'm recording already. That's I'm gonna have to like turn you into the Elmo with the fire in the background. That's what you look like. <laughs> <laughs> Do I oh I don't have the fire background saved on this computer. Damn it. Oh. We're not letting anyone in just yet, but do you guys have any questions before we get started? For us? That How are you so them. awesome? <laughs> Any other questions? Valid question. Valid question. Besides awkward ones? <laughs> yes, next question. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Yeah. How many Excedrin pills are you supposed to take if you feel a headache coming on? I'd go with two, but I don't use Excedrin. Depends on the leaf. <laughs> what is the, are they 200 milligrams each? Um, response loading, please stand by. Honestly, I'm not sure. So the one thing about Excedrin is they're typically 200 milligrams of painkiller and 50 milligrams of caffeine. So oh, okay. if you take two, it's going to be like having painkillers and a, a strong cup of coffee. That's a lot. Um, so this says acetaminophen, 500 milligrams, caffeine, 65. So I'm gonna I would do five. one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you want a very excited brand. <laughs> I mean, we wouldn't mind. Yeah, I my name is Brent from Six and I'm kind of really, really tall today. Tess <laughs> is like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's two. Shall we open the gates? <laughs> open the fun gates. <laughs> Let uh, them in. Theory, it will Winter is coming. Yeah. On the panels. What's on the wall behind you, Phoenix? It's some, it's epic. It's my bucket list. Mm. Oh my. Yes. That's a lot of things to do. Yeah, I wrote it all out when I was like in high school and really angsty. <laughs> Feel that? Do you find yourself adding to it faster than you're taking them down? No, I don't take things down. And I actually, there's a lot of things that I need to check off up there that I haven't checked off. Nice. Um, I've been really lazy about it, but I got the idea from a mutual friend of uh, Cassie's and mine, uh, Missy because she had the she had the bucket list on the wall thing and then I was like I want to put my bucket list on the wall and I'll make it a collage because like her reasoning for it was okay if you have friends come over and you have like these random things on your wall and you know maybe one of them says I want to fly in a non-commercial airplane and then you have a friend come over that's like I'm a pilot I can I can oh. do that <laughs> You know, that's that sort of a thing. Cool. I was like, that's great. That's a great way to like manifest into existence. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, so. I'm already starting to cry. I miss Missy so much. I miss Missy too. Yeah. She was the first person I ever danced with. Mm -hmm. she, she was the person I had my like aha connection moment with where I was like, <clears throat> I'm hooked. It was wonderful. Oh, wow. <laughs> she, she was badass. She was super badass. I'm always sad she never competed because like. Oh my God, she could have torn it yeah. up. Yeah. She would have torn it up. Yeah. All right. Shall we 
on with the shenanigans. I believe so. We shall. All right. Shenanigans and he-nanigans, we're all into it. <laughs> and they-nanigans and he-nanigans. Yes. Yes. <laughs>